The orange crush? What am I talking about? Soda? Perhaps I'm flashing back to the 70s and early 80s in that famed Denver Bronco defense. No, I'm talking about a fly pattern. Join me at my time bench. I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. Hello everyone, I'm Phil Rowley and welcome to my YouTube channel and my fly tying bench. Today I'm going to tie you the Orange Crush. This was a fly that was first introduced to me by my good friend Bob Vanderwater when we were chasing cutthroat along the east slope of the Rockies. It's since gone on to become a staple within my fly tying box. It has a number of great properties. It floats well. It's easy to see, it's easy to tie, and perhaps most of all, trout love to eat it. So join me, I'll show you how to tie it. So it's time to tie the Orange Crush. I'm going to tie this on a 1760 Daiichi number 8. You can tie them 8s, 6s, 10s, 12 if you want. 8's a good size. I'm just going to use some UTC 140 thread. Just get a good thread base on here. Down about halfway between the point and the crushed bar. And we're going to come back up. And we're going to dub a body from the front to the back to start with, to put a foundation. So we're going to use some orange ice dub. And again, you can tie this in a lot of different colors if you want. But this is a bit of an attractor fly. Cutthroat love it. And also when I go down to Argentina, a big rainbows on Jurassic Lago Strobel or the surrounding lagunas love a stripped Chernobyl lake fly like this one. We just got a little coating on there. Just going to start our thread like so and just walk that dubbing back. Build up a fairly robust body. And some more dubbing. Always better to do it, your dubbing in short, manageable noodles. Be more accurate. And of course, you don't overdub the body. It's easier to add it than take it off. Not just right. So for the body, we've got two sections of two millimeter sheet foam that we have glued together, two big pieces of using 3M's Super 7-7 adhesive. And then you can cut with a pair of scissors, or in this case, we used a Chernobyl trimmer to punch out our body. So it's got a orange underbody and a tan top. So we're going to place this on top. You see this one's perfectly sized for this number eight. We're going to lay it so the tip of that uh, trimmed body is just slightly past the bend. Over top. I like to go a couple of wraps so I've completely enveloped and then use that strength of that 140 to suck this down. And what we're going to do is walk the thread forward. We want to create a little waist in there as in waste of W-A-I-S-T, not throwaway stuff. And we get that tied in like so. And then we're going to add a pair of legs on each side. So we're going to use some centipede legs. You can use lots of different colors, but I really like this speckled yellow, black, and red in medium. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these two, and I'm actually going to, with the thread hanging in, one of the ways you can do it is come underneath the fly, the legs are between myself and the thread. Lift them up, drop them right where you want them. So we're just going to put them in place, a couple of wraps, then grab the near side and pull them along the sides and do the same on the far side and then add some securing wraps. Really don't want to pull too tight because you see I pulled too tight there and they we want them to flare out like that. 
and then we're going to take a little section of thin sheet foam, this is like one millimeter razor foam, and we're just going to cut, I've cut a section out, maybe an eighth of an inch wide, and we're going to lay that on top like so, and kind of pull down on it. Make sure that's sort of centered. And come in with our scissors, and this is a little cider post. Trim it like so. And then we're just going to pull this back, and I'm going to spin my bobbin clockwise to cord up my thread, and very quickly run through the body. It's going to give it a little ribbed effect. Add a little durability. Take that right up to the front of the body. And probably trim these legs at this point because they're getting in the way. Or at least give them a rough trim. And then we're going to pull the foam down again. Once, twice, and then really start to walk that thread forward and build up another little band a few wraps underneath walk that back and the bigger the band the more your legs are going to splay so I'm going to go back a little bit and then take just like we did on the previous set of legs take two lengths of the centipede legs underneath the hook the legs are between myself and the tying thread. Bring them up, let the thread drop them on. Another wrap, and then grab one set, pull them towards you. Other set, pull them away from you. Add some additional wraps. And then we can take another section of the one mil foam over top, over top, over top. Make sure that's centered. Trim so they stick up so you can see those. Like so. And then I'm just going to whip finish. Hold this underneath the head. Try not to suck in a couple of legs. I could, of course, pre-trim them a little bit, but why do anything easy? Pull down. Now we just got to do some trimming and gluing. Those legs are a little long, so I want to trim them. Maybe and this is entirely up to you. Longer legs are going to jiggle and perhaps be more attractive to fish. You don't want them to foul up in your leader or cause the, the fly to windmill. Make sure those are where you want them. And we're just going to put a little Blue. So we can roll this fly over. Now I'll put a little bone dry. You could use super glue as well. Well, Finished Orange Crush. Simple and deadly for cutthroat or any other fish you want to come up to the surface and eat an attractor.